Hello everybody, thanks for joining me for another one man review. Today I'll be reviewing four books. These all came from Desert Island in New York. Um, they're a, a shop as well as a publisher. And I saw on Instagram that they had, I, I've seen issues of Smoke Signal before, Partners and Sons and over the Jordan Crane one. Um, I've missed the Maria Medem one, which really bummed me out because I really like her art and I've been looking to get some of it. Um, but I saw that they had an issue of um, smoke signal that w was has James Jean's work in it and that the only way to get it at the time I saw it You know the only way to get them at that point was to order the mystery box And I figured I like doing that mystery box thing with partners and sons and um, escape pod comics Anyway, so I would try their mystery box and see what's up. So we'll take a look at what I got um, The first two things that I got they're not really comics and so they're not terribly interesting to me I could see why they're cool products though like this one is uh, King Terry Garrow covers. So this is historically really interesting, um, such an important magazine. And then these obviously must have been a popular run of covers that this artist did. So that's interesting to see, but I don't know. I, that's not really my type of art and it's, it's not comics, you know, like I, I appreciate lots of art and design, but really when I'm spending a bunch of money on a mystery box. I thought I was getting some comics. So that one and this one I wasn't too interested in. This is a reprint of some, some zines by Daniel Shepard. And really the zines were just collections of his illustrations. I like this one a lot better because I like the illustrations in here. But again, you know, like a, a newsprint zine with a bunch of illustrations. I really, really have to like the artist, like with this James Jean one. Um, a lot of it just feels kind of like flash tattoo art or you know prison art or something to me um, I like these ones better so there's some stuff like that that I like in there but there there was at least in this one I got one comic and I quite enjoyed it. Um, it it's it's a cool comic I like this little eyeball character and some of the graphics but you know not just not much in here for me so I I'm not sure you know maybe I'll do one more of these and send what other kind of see what other kind of books they send but if it's mostly books like this it's just not for me um, the other two I got and enjoyed a lot more. This one is one they published by Deb so Sokolow, and it's called Environments for Controlling People, Best Practices. And sorry, these are so big, I gotta show them sideways like this. Uh, but this is really a funny, like, instruction manual on designing architecture for a way to make, like, people uncomfortable and mess with people which is a really kind of funny idea. And then the diagrams are just, they're really like tight and well drawn, but they're also like intentionally poor. You know, like they're showing intentionally making unevenly spaced stairs. And then there's always these visualizations of like emotional states, like a visualization of increasing dizziness, but really it's just like gradients and stuff. Um, so I really like this one from a formal standpoint. I think the designs are interesting and I think the whole project's kind of just funny you know, imagining these architectures. I, I think that like here you have more or less paranoia, but it's pretty much the same little type of graphics every time, just hatching and, and stippling and stuff. So this, this one's funny to me, like here's a meeting room. Um, it's definitely critical of, you know, how society builds things that control. And I, I think we've talked about that on the channel a bunch of like, why do humans always design to our worst kind of emotional interests rather than our best? So I would like to see Somebody, maybe Deb Sokolow or maybe somebody else, I would like to see a version of this where someone's doing the opposite. Like this is a good negative critique of what's wrong with architecture. It would be fun to see somebody try and say, okay, like this is how we should reimagine the world to, to speak to what humans need psychologically. Like how do we design around that? Which I would think would be more like the Frank Lloyd Wright integrating uh, architecture into nature, that type of thing. So I, I would like to see the opposite of this, but this is pretty funny and I enjoy this one. I'm glad I have this one. Uh, I'll definitely keep this. I might take it in uh, to work too and show my students because it's somewhere in between comics and like printmaking and fine art. Like I could definitely see these have be, being up on a gallery wall, something about the format here and some, some of them being seeming like they're like this. I know it says 14 and 15, but I could see these on a wall together because they always kind of have a, a little bit of information down here that relates to up there. So this this seems like something that could be installed in the gallery to me. Uh, so I might take it to my to school to work and, and show my students that kind of stuff as they think about bookmaking. And then the, the big boy, it's not even gonna fit on screen here, 
is this smoke signal of October 2022, and this is the James Jean issue. Uh, this is the reason I bought this. I've, I've followed James Jean's work for a very long time since he was doing the covers for Fables is where I first became aware of him. And I remember early, early on, in, like in the days of the internet, um, I would spend a lot of time on James Jean's website looking at his sketchbooks. And that was really influential to me in the early 90s. Uh, sorry, you won't see the left-handed pages, I guess. It's too difficult to fit them. But uh, this is kind of cool because I, I haven't kept up with him in that way. I've, in, I've really enjoyed watching his career go from being like an illustrator to being this like really highly celebrated fine artist who's doing these gigantic paintings and these amazing prints and sculptures that he does. It, it's been really cool to see someone actually level up from like, look, I'm a cover artist for comic books to like, I am a really well-funded fine artist that can pretty much hire people to make anything that I want to make based on my vision. And his vision just keeps getting more and more interesting as well. So someone who's obviously like a really relentless creator, just at the absolute, you know, highest level of talent as well and just kind of visionary uh, i mean everything everything's so so amazing whether it be drawing or painting or sculpture they're just all amazing um so i i've enjoyed watching that progress but i haven't like kept up on watch looking at sketchbooks and i don't even know if he still does that or releases it but this is a pretty good indication that james jean still spends a lot of time just drawing you know, you think when someone's making all these gigantic paintings and sculptures and they have a whole studio of assistants, like you have so little time that it's all going to be spent on, on a piece. And this shows like he still has a very active sketchbook. I don't know how old a lot of this stuff is, but it looks contemporary to what his paintings are in terms of content and style. So I'm assuming most of this is fairly recent sketch work. And it's, it's really humbling, a bit scary to see how much work this guy does, how prolific he is, as well as how good he is, but also really inspiring. Like, look, if if you can get to the point where you can spend all day doing this and you really just devote yourself to it, like, this is how good you can get. And I, I really like seeing that. I just absolutely love it. It brings back memories of, you know, when I was probably at my most creative and when I was producing the most, which is when I was in my very, very early 20s when I was looking at James Jean stuff and... I was kind of drawing incessantly and that's probably when I was the best because because I was drawing so incessantly. So this is really inspirational. I know this also does not have any comics in it which I was kind of complaining about. And Smoke Signal usually, uh, well I don't know, I, it's usually comic artists. I don't know if it's usually all comics but the ones that I've seen have more comics in it. So normally I would be disappointed but in the case of James Jean this is really cool. Like look at this sketchbook page right here. That's absolutely amazing. They're like finished pieces. Uh, I think he's one of those first guys too, like this online trend of showing your sketchbook and every page in the sketchbook is like this beautiful composition. James Jean was definitely the first person that I knew that was doing that. He seemed like someone who really, you know, each sketchbook page is a finished piece. And I always thought he was kind of nutty for that. It was like he just put all that energy into a finished piece. But you can see like if you put this amount of energy into your just your sketchbook then your finished pieces are going to be what his finished pieces are and that was kind of a stupid outlook that i had as a kid like don't waste your time i guess i still have it i don't really like spending a lot of time sketching and i probably should be doing that incessantly so this is inspiring for me and a bit sad because it's like oh man you know i, I have so little time uh, but I, I think I'll be finding more time to try and sketch uh, due to due to this and I got to figure out a way to just get the smoke signal From desert island because I don't know that the mystery box is for me I, I'm gonna do one more of them and see because it wasn't that expensive But if it's a bunch of stuff like this, then it's not bad. I do plenty of people like it, but it's not for me uh, but smoke signal every every issue that I've seen is amazing um, the reproduction's not the best, like on all this tiny line art, but you know, it's a newsprint thing. It's, I'm not expecting, it's like a, this is a free magazine if you can go pick it up in person. It's, I think it's 10 bucks if you order them individually. So you're not expecting the best, best print quality, but it's always like the highest level artists and people that I, I love their work. So I got to figure out how to get like a subscription of just Smoke Signal because I think it's very cool. And I would suggest you all do as well. It's, it's a pretty amazing publication. The Jordan Crane one really blew my mind. 
So that was the, the mystery box that I got from Desert Island. They have a lot of other cool products to go check out, so I'll, I'll put a link to them. Um, so go support them, and if you enjoy what we're doing here on the channel and you want to support us, the two best ways to do that are through our Patreon. Uh, we have some contests on there. We have some voting, some polls that you can take part in. We use that money to help us buy the books that we review, so we appreciate that. And then the best thing you can do to support Living the Line is to support Sean's publishing projects through Living the Line Publishing. So we'll take a look at some of those books now. Plaza by Yoka Yamuichi. Uh, this is translated by Ryan Holmberg and is a very large for a manga. So that's a really cool feature of this book, this standard manga size. And it, it, this is just a 200 some odd page um, representation of what Yokoyama Yuichi thinks of the carnival parade. And he's just made this like relentlessly loud and rhythmic book that pushes all kinds of amazing boundaries of what comics and manga are and we could not recommend this book more. The Eisner nominated The Strange Death of Alex Raymond by Dave Sim and myself. This is a gorgeously illustrated and designed book. Dave doing most of the illustration, um, amazing compositions throughout. What Dave is doing is he's recording his obsession with the death of master cartoonist Alex Raymond behind the, the wheel of Stan Drake's car when they got into a car crash. The best description of the book that I've heard is that it's like understanding comics with pages like this uh, mixed with something like From Hell when you get into uh, the, the theories about you know what actually happened with the car crash. And then with Sean on production it's just one of the most gorgeously printed books you could get a hold of. Thanks for following along. Take it away Jack. You want to see all these books? Smash that subscribe button and the like button and the bell and then you get them!